Hi there everyone, today I'm reviewing The Wolf Time by Gav Thorpe. So The Wolf Time is book three in the Dawn of Fire series focused on the Space Wolves obviously. The blurb mentions the encroachment of the Orcs, but they barely feature in the book. This is more about the integration of the Primaris Marines into the Space Wolves chapter, a chapter that holds its traditions close to its heart, and a chapter distrusting of Gilliman or outside intervention. It follows Gaius predominantly, but also looks at the politics of key heroes of the Space Wolves chapter, Logan Grimnar, Crom Dragon Gaze, and of course Beyond the Fell Handed. The central character is Gaius, a Primaris Marine with a deliberately unspace wolf like name, who struggles to fit in with his Space Wolf firstborn Marines. They reject him as one of their own and try to show him that respect has to be earned. It's quite a promising dynamic, and one that makes sense. The Primaris Marines are touted as being better in every way compared to their firstborn equivalents, but are unproven and ignorant of tradition. The danger of this dynamic is that it focuses too much on the kind of negative bickering between characters, and that's something that does tend to happen in Space Marine books and can be done poorly. But I think for the most part, the wolf time stays on the right side of this. It's helped by Gaius being an interesting character. He's not too one-dimensional, he's determined to prove himself despite the firstborn's jibes, and he's a decent enough main character that you want to follow. Other characters, mainly for the Space Wolves fans, to be honest, and they're as, as passionate and traditional, I guess, as you'd expect for the most part. Our Jack Rockfist features fairly heavily at points and had interesting perspectives as well. An issue with this book is that it's titled after a big event in Space Wolf Prophecy, Lehman Russ returning even from death. Of course it is fairly predictable that Games Workshop will bring back as many of the Primarchs as they can, because it makes them money. And besides, I imagine most fans of their respective chapters probably want the opportunity to play with their Primarch mark, as we have seen with the Ultramarines and Dark Angels, or even the entire Horus Heresy tabletop game. But this book only has characters speak about the wolf time and around it. There's no indication really of it happening now. This is more of a precursor and a setup. Logan Grimnar speaks of wanting to prove to his Primarch that he's done a good job in his absence, nor does this book really feature the Orcs, remember? I guess the blurb couldn't really sell the book off of the politics of the Primaris integration with the Space Wolves chapter. But the integration is actually less boring than it sounds. It tees up a bit of a kind of imperial confrontation and explores the relative politics of the more conservative and progressive Space Wolves. I was surprised that this was actually some of the best parts of the book, although I do feel the earlier parts of scene setting and introducing characters definitely includes quite a bit of filler. The book clocks in at over 500 pages, when I feel it could have been easily 400 or maybe even less. The action is fairly mundane where it does happen, and really unmemorable, perhaps excepting some of Gaius's sections. The fighting with orcs barely occurs really, and I wondered why it was even included. Es essentially I guess it's to have some kind of threat that the Space Wolves are focused on, but it seemed like a plot excuse rather than being integrated effectively with the story, action or characters. It's almost like the kind of Games Workshop setting just has this event happen, so it had to get included and affect things here, but it doesn't really. So in terms of final score, The Wolf Time takes a bit of a different angle to books so far. The Wolf Time is not here yet, and this book just feels like a stopgap. I would say that although not necessarily a huge amount happens in this book, it was interesting enough later on. But that can't help dispel that a lot of it just seems to be kind of fan service, then effectively carrying through a decent thread of its own. Albeit, Gaius was a decent character, I thought. So the book isn't terrible, but it is one that most people can skip. And fans of the Space Wolves might want to read it, but even then, don't expect much in the way of main of crucial events in this book, because they're just not there. So I'll give it a 5 out of 10. It kind of does, you know, catch up with the Space Wolves, but not really that much happens, to be honest. 
It was an okay read. I'm reviewing all of the Dawn of Fire series. I've got Throne of Light ready, so um, like and subscribe for that, and thanks for watching.